Hello, biology students. We're going to be talking about DNA and genetic technology. Let's jump into this weird stuff. So we call this biotechnology. It's any technology that manipulates or changes DNA. Sometimes it will be used the synonym term genetic engineering. These words mean the same thing. So you might want to write off to the side synonyms. Here's a really important example we'll touch on in class. So diabetic patients or people with diabetes have trouble digesting sugars or glucose. They sometimes are missing the insulin protein. So what we can do is we can take the genes from one species, a working human version of the gene, and insert it into a different species like a bacteria. And we can make that bacteria have the DNA from a human in it. So this circular thing is the human and bacteria DNA together. Whoa. And then this bacteria will make this working insulin gene really fast using protein synthesis, transcription, and then translation. And we can harness that bacteria to make tons of insulin. And it will do it fast and cheaply. And that's how doctors and scientists make shots for people who are diabetic, who need help digesting sugar. We use bacteria to do it. Whoa. But it's all about combining DNA from two different sources. We call that combining DNA from two different sources recombinant DNA. It has the word combine in it. An organism that has DNA from two different sources is also called transgenic. Transgenic is something that has recombinant DNA in it. So for instance, broccoli, I can take genes from broccoli and combine them with genes from cauliflower, and I can make a transgenic food organism called broccoli flower. Now, not everyone will want to eat broccoli flower. And I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, and that's something we have to consider. So that brings us to one type of genetic technology. I can modify organisms and especially modified organisms that become food. People get really worried about that and that would be what are the risks? People worry that maybe I won't just be doing this with simple things like broccoli and cauliflower. Maybe I'm going to accidentally use something that lots of people are allergic to, like seafood or nuts, and add it to something else and cause somebody to get allergies. This tends not to happen, but people are worried. And they also worry if I'm messing with the DNA, will that make the thing less healthy? Is that broccoli flour less healthy than regular broccoli? I also worry that it will cause different organisms, especially meat products, to be antibiotic resistance. We give cows a lot of antibiotics, that way they don't have bacteria in them. So when I cook the cow or the the pig or whatever type of meat it is or chicken, I don't want to get bacteria from it. But if it became antibiotic resistant, that means those antibiotics wouldn't work. I also worry if I'm creating these crazy organisms that maybe they'll get loose in the wild and they'll become super organisms or super weeds if they are plants and they'll spread all over the place and I'll never be able to get rid of them. It's kind of like a freaky Jumanji or Jurassic Park style scenario which is not very realistic, but people still get worried. There are some benefits. I could always try to create organisms, and there are some that are resistant to being eaten by bugs because they have certain chemicals in them now, or resistant to different diseases that they would have normally gotten. I could also try to combine things like something from a cactus, DNA from a cactus, and put it into a regular plant, which allows it not to need as much water or to now be able to grow in the desert. All of these things would allow me to grow more food and feed all the hungry people on the planet. So cool. But we have to be able to weigh the risks and the benefits and make our decisions because you guys have to make those decisions in your future if you want to be buying these things or creating laws for or against them. We also can use DNA technology to compare different people. Just like how we can compare people by fingerprints, we can compare fingerprints of DNA. A DNA fingerprint is these things. We call these bands. We can separate DNA fragments by size to identify different people. Let's talk about how we do that. 
All right, so we use an enzyme to chop up DNA from some sort of crime scene, for instance, like blood sample or hair sample or skin sample. And those enzymes karate chop up the DNA. And when they're all in little pieces, we can use an electrical current to move them across a jello-like substance. All right, and each different person on the planet will have different size fragments because the enzyme will chop in different places. No one has these fragments exactly alike unless they're identical twins. And we use a tool called gel electrophoresis because it has electricity and it has this jello thing that we're putting the DNA on. And it's really cool. We can use it for lots of different things. Let's learn how. We could use it for paternity testing. So for instance, here's the child. All right, and we're wondering, is this person to the right the dad? Definitely, we know this is the mom, came out of the mom. All right, and we can look across horizontally. Does the DNA match mom from the child? Yes, there is one band that matches. But of course, if a dad is the biological dad, they also should have DNA in common horizontally too. Oh, this one does. Look, they have the same DNA. That suggests this person in this picture to the left is the dad. You're the daddy. Let's look at the example to the right. We again have a child in the middle and the mom to the left. Mom and child have a DNA in common. But somehow there has to be DNA from biological dad for it to be biological dad. And this person who we're wondering is the father... <gasps> They have no horizontal DNA in common. This one doesn't overlap with the child, and this one doesn't overlap with the child. The child has nothing in common with the dad. Well, guess what? You're not the daddy. What else can we use it for? Crime scenes. So just like I said, we can get crime scene DNA, and here it's shown in this column two, lane two. And the person who committed this crime would have exactly the same exact pattern on their column. So person one in this column, no, they're not the same. Person two, no, not the same as this one. Person three, yeah, they're exactly the same. So they committed the crime. We can also use DNA technology to help humans. So for instance, we are trying to learn about the average human's DNA, and we actually know the exact sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's for the average person. And we're using that to really understand what happens if a, GNA, a gene is missing or has a typo which is often related to disease. And this is helping doctors and scientists understand disease and maybe even fix disease. We call trying to fix the disease gene therapy. If I try to replace or cure a defective missing gene, that would be really cool. Scientists are really struggling with this right now, so it's cutting edge. But we're hoping that scientists figure out gene therapy for many diseases in the near future. Some are in trial, but they're not perfect. There's also genetic screening, which means I'm checking, does a future child or the current person have a risk for a disease? So I can check, do I have a risk for maybe breast cancer? I can also check, does my future child maybe have a risk for getting a fatal disease if I am having a baby with another specific person? And this might lead people not to have babies or to select certain genes to put in their babies, which is a little scary. All of this leads to a lot of questions, and there are 10 or so questions we might have. All right, here's one of them. Harmful organisms might accidentally be produced if we're playing around with DNA a lot. That worries a lot of people. People are also worried about if I am increasing the ability to diagnose genetic diseases before birth, does that cause people to decide not to have babies? Should we be changing genes in humans? Should I decide, hey, maybe I want my baby to be super buff and also have purple hair and screw that brown eye stuff? I don't know. Lastly, uh, a couple more. We could maybe be worried about these things if they do start working better, like gene therapy. What if only rich people can use it and people who are not as wealthy can't? Is that fair? 
What if also we end up using these things to create really horrible weapons that hurt people on purpose? That would be terrible. All these things make people super worried and also really excited. So now you have to make some judgment calls. What do you think?